Tinatato Kato. Good evening. The Education Minister is being hauled before Parliament's highest court, its Privileges Committee, for misleading comments over attendance data after NewsHub revealed her office told the Ministry to delay its release. It comes as 90% of the early childhood education sector is now telling the government its 20 hours free care for two year olds is unworkable. Political reporter Amelia Wade explains. The move to give two-year-olds 20 hours free learning is a bit of a paradox. It's a catch-22. If we opt in, um, we, we go down. Early childhood providers have to be all in or all out. If you're opting out, you've got to opt out to the three and four-year-old 20 ECE hours as well. The problem, they say, is the funding for two-year-olds is too low, so they can't afford to opt in. Home-based early learning will get around $5.30 an hour, so an educator with four two-year-olds will earn less than minimum wage. It actually effectively means closing down. It won't be feasible to have two-year-olds in our service. I think that's something that we should have a conversation with them about and we're open to having a conversation with the sector and we've said that the whole way through. That conversation is happening this week but the government won't budge on funding. It is up to centres how they determine that they wish to operate within those within those regulations. The early childhood policy was the crown jewel in the budget, alongside scrapping $5 prescription fees. On the day that was announced, Manurewa MP Arena Williams took to Twitter saying it meant her father will never have to choose between heating his bedroom and his prescriptions. Turns out Williams' father actually lives with her. My point was that he would never have to choose, um, and so I said he will never have to choose. She clearly misled the public, whether intentionally or otherwise. But the one in serious trouble for misleading statements, Minister Jantinetti. It is an important principle that the House can trust the accuracy of ministerial replies. The Education Minister was today referred to Parliament's court, the Powerful Privileges Committee, for saying this in February. I can categorically tell that member that the Ministry of Education is responsible for the data. I have no say over that. Jan Tanetti is referring to Term 3 attendance data. Earlier this month, News Hub revealed her office did have a say over the data. We obtained documents showing they stalled the ministry to time the data release with a truancy announcement. She was forced to correct the record, but the Speaker wants a ruling on whether... The delay in correcting an inaccurate statement in this instance amounts to contempt. A very serious allegation the Privileges Committee will decide. Kia ora, Amelia. So how serious is it for a minister to be referred to the Privileges Committee? Very serious. The last time a minister was referred to what is called Parliament's highest court was 15 years ago in 2008, and that was Winston Peters over the Owen, Glo uh, the Owen Glenn donation saga, and in that case the committee recommended a censure. What happens now to Jan Tanetti is the committee decides whether to first investigate, and if it does, it kind of acts like a court. The, uh, the committee members, who are all MPs, will call witnesses, they'll hear evidence, and then they'll decide whether Jan Tanetti did mislead the Parliament and then decide what punishment would fit the crime. And this is Parliament, so this place has its own rules that can range from anything from an apology to a debate, or as one MP joked, it being imprisoned in the parliamentary car park. But now it is all up to the Labour stacked MPs and on the committee as to whether to nip this in the bud quickly or to drag it out until after the election. Amelia Wade, live from Parliament. Tinakwe.